G'day, Ben Futrell here from on3legs.com. I'm going to give you a quick video on how to use Lightroom to enhance your images. I quite often get asked if I use HDR on everything, and the answer is no. Um, mainly because uh, HDR doesn't suit everything, and uh, HDR is also quite time consuming. So the um, the other alternative is then to use something like Lightroom or Photoshop. Now, a lot of people do have Lightroom, and Lightroom has become quite affordable and easy to get, especially with the uh, you know the Creative Cloud packages or whatever that thing Adobe was doing. I think quite a few people got the Lightroom Photoshop uh, trial for I think it was six months or something for about ten bucks a month. And I get quite a few questions on could I do a tutorial on Lightroom, and I've never really. Um, thought about putting one together but considering I've been asked here it is now this is going to be really quick really simple I'm not going to go into great detail uh, I'm going to show you very simply how to do a couple of things in Lightroom that I find really really cool and how I can enhance an image fast so I can get it back from a shoot want to want to just quickly enhance an image and away I go now you'll see uh, the images I've got on the screen this is uh, the Remarkles in Queenstown New Zealand South Island and if you have a look at the bottom here my film strip you'll see that I quite often take multiple exposures regardless and um, I've taken multiple exposures here this would have been uh, I would say with my 14 to 24 lens let's uh, I would I would say that's what I've done this with it's at 18 millimeters um, it is uh, I would say I've used my yeah, I would have. I would have used my Lee ND Grad Kit. You can see the vignetting in the top corners. That happens on my 1424 when I use those filters. And with matrix metering, it's still too dark in the foreground and too light up the top half there. And that was because the sun was setting behind a big mountain behind me called Bob's Peak. It was casting a huge shadow on this lake and was giving me a very uneven exposure. But let's not panic. Quite easy to fix. Now, when I was shooting the image, I would have uh, had a look at my histogram. You can see my histogram here. And you can see that there's nothing bunched up to, against the left-hand side or the right-hand side. So I would have looked at this and gone, yeah, this is cool. This this exposure works. Even if I go to the plus two, or sorry, the plus one, um, you can see still nothing lost up on the right-hand side here. So I could use this one here. But I'm going to use the zero. This is the one that the camera would have spat out if I'd only taken one exposure, just to give you an idea of what's possible. Now, let's turn on the before and after. I think that'll be cool. There we go. So that's just a little button down the left here, before and after. Just so you can see the difference um, that it's making when I slide the sliders over here around. So in Lightroom, what happens is once you've you've got your library, um, which is where all your images are, once you want to work on an image, select it. And then you can press this button here called Develop. And that's when, Develop is when you can start to make changes. And you'll get all of these confusing looking sliders on the right hand side um, and you can sort of see these little arrows here you can click on them and fold them all up you can see that I get stuck into mine a fair bit they're all out but there you go so you've got all these different um, options here basic tone curve um, you know you've got things like color saturation hue black and white split toning detail so sharpening etc lens correction things like chromatic aberrations distortion other effects and then camera calibration we're just going to go into the basic at this point uh, which is where i start with all my images now this one being dark in the foreground light in the background i can fix that pretty quickly i can use this one here called highlights drag it all the way to the left and you can straight away see that the sky has got darker the foreground's now needs to be brought up so shadows all the way to the right so you can see what that's done if you look at the before on the left you can see the after on the right a bit more contrast would be good and you're going to be careful uh, not to overdo it and what's starting to happen is I'll start be starting to lose some information in my blacks and the way I can show you that this is a really cool trick in Lightroom in fact that I'll show you if you have a look on the histogram on the each corner of the top of the histogram is this little triangle. If you click on it once, you get that white highlighted box around it. 
Now, it doesn't look like it's doing anything, but it's actually going to be a really cool uh, tool to help you understand when you're losing uh, information in your shadows or in your highlights. And I'll give you an example. I'll grab the black slider. I'm going to slide it all the way to the left, and you'll see this bright blue color now on my image. What that's telling me is that I'm losing that information. If I grab the white slider and take it all the way to the right, you'll see all this red stuff now coming out. And that's telling me I'm losing information in my highlights. So a really easy way. You no longer have to look at your, uh, at your histogram. You just move things around. And if you see blue or red, and I believe you can change those colors, but um, you can see I've got mine set up as blue and red. If you see those colors, then you know that you've pushed things a little bit too far. All right, so where were we? Contrast. Um, let's drop the blacks a bit. I'm okay with a little bit of blue down there because you're not really going to notice that underneath those rocks. I might drop the whites a little bit as well just to bring that sky so it all looks a bit more even. And then maybe bring that exposure up just a tad. Just like plus 0.2 as you can see. Um, what else am I going to do? Clarity is another cool one. Let's bring that up. That really just brings a lot of definition to everything. Got to be careful not to overdo it. You can overdo it. A little bit of that. Um, something that I don't like using globally is vibrance and saturation. So you can see when I put it all there, look how blue it all goes. And that's why I don't like using uh, um, vibrance globally. Now when I talk about globally, what I mean is these adjustments affect the entire image. So that's called a global adjustment. And then we can make local adjustments, um, which is where we use a brush or a mask of some sort, like a graduated filter or uh, make a selection or something. I'm going to show you uh, that in a second. Um, that sort of gives you an idea of that basic stuff there. So as you can see, all I really did was uh, a little bit of tweaking, but mostly was dropping the highlights and increasing the shadows. So let's go to detail. That's the other one that I tend to use. And you, know, you see this little box on the right gives you sort of a 100%. You can also go over the left and go to 1 to 1. Bring it up. I quite often like to go to 3 to 1. Really uh, blow it up. You can see it's a bit pixelated. But at least we can sort of see what's happening. You know, if I go crazy on the sharpening, you can see the... I don't know if you can see the noise in the sky there. Um, you can also see this glowing edge. Um which is like a thing called chromatic aberration fringing. Um, so when you when you over sharpen, you're going to bring those sort of things out, those edges. Um, but it doesn't look like it is chromatic aberration as such, because it's not disappearing when I do that. So it's just over sharpening. So it's the edge. Um, so you just got to be careful when you sharpen. So that's why I like to go to, to the three to one. Let's me get up nice and close and see. Um, I still am guilty of over sharpening. Uh, I do like things to be nice and crisp. But you can see as soon as I slide that I'm getting noise in the sky. So I can use a bit of noise reduction. Now there's, of course there's other software and things that does this stuff. But uh, no, you know, noise reduction in particular. There's other programs that do it better than, than what Lightroom do. But for the purpose of the exercise I'm going to do everything in Lightroom just so we can see what it looks like all right so that's a one to one now all right so you can see that i've done the sharpening with a little bit of noise reduction and it looks much better on the right than the left um so that's detail let's pack that away yeah let's leave it at that okay so i'll go back to fitting it in just so you can see the before and after you can see let me just get rid of that you can see the before and after is pretty dramatic. I'm still not happy with the foreground. I think the foreground's too blue. In fact, the whole image might be a bit blue, but I like the blue sky. So this is where you can start doing what's called local adjustments. Things like this one here is a graduated filter. I can drag that up across from the bottom of the image. And then I can now make changes. For example, I could desaturate that area like that. So I get rid of those that blue out of there. I could just drop the temp down a bit maybe or bring it up rather, warm it up. And if I you can see that what I'm doing is just making changes to where that graduated filter is. Let's bring that up a bit more. My computer's taking a little bit of time to catch up. There we go. Um that looks more like what I saw when I was there. Then I just click on the graduated filter and it disappears. Um 
you know, just say I wanted to sharpen those rocks a bit more. Same thing. By the way, if you want to see where you've made the changes um, when you use the brush tool, there is a way to do that, and I'll show you that as well. Um, just down here, there's a thing called Show Selected Mask Overlay. If you tick that, as I make the changes, it'll show red. Um, so I'm going to feather my brush. We've got 100% flow. Let's just go 100% on the density because I just want to show you how this works. See that red? So that's showing me where I have actually brushed. Now I can turn that off by clicking that. Click it back on and you can see it. Um, I'm going to whoops, go back in there. Okay. If I click on that, if I don't like it, I can hit the delete button. It's going to get rid of that. All right, let me start again. Put a fresh one on. Now that I've shown you how to know what's going on, I'll bring that flow back. Bring the density back. Um, what am I going to do? I want to sharpen these rocks up. So it doesn't matter whether you make the adjustments before or after. I've got the sh the, um, the tick box ticked down there to show my mask. So let's just quickly let's just quickly paint over the rocks so we can see red. And you're not going to see it on the left, of course, because uh, it's a before and after. But I know I've brushed it. If I turn the uh, mask off now. I can now make adjustments locally to that one spot that was masked. So I can drop the exposure, for example, just on the rocks or bring them up. Okay, so I'm now just adjusting that one area. I can change the contrast just on the rocks. Um, I can, once again, do a shadows and highlight adjustment on them. Um, I can bring the sharpness up. I can, I mean, I can make all these adjustments now locally. And you can do as many brushes as you like. You can just keep putting them there. All right. Anyway, I mean, it gives you a good idea of what you can do. Let's have a, let's change that before and after to go to a left and right. There we go. So you can see if you look at the image on the left compared to the image on the right, it's a huge difference. And I haven't used HDR. It's taken me only a few minutes in Lightroom, and I've come up with an image now that is much more appealing to the eye. Um, if I now, you know, if we zoom in, you can see even just the, the clarity in the mountain and the, like it's just much, much better. So um, let me go back to uh, fitting. It's just a much better looking image. It, to me, it's much more appealing and, it, you know, it was a very, very simple fix. So if you're looking for a simple way to enhance an image and you don't want to have to worry about learning Photoshop or HDR or any of that, here's the answer. Hope you enjoyed that and hope it helps you uh, get more confident with, uh, with post-processing your images. Mm -hmm.